everybody, welcome back to Yumble TV. I'm Yumble, and today I have a situation to discuss with you. Um, imagine a city. It's been growing. It, it's it's got more and more population. Ten thousand, twenty thousand, maybe maybe around twenty five thousand to thirty thousand. It starts seeing problems. Um, you start to see traffic backups, and your services can't get through, and people start leaving, and the property value drops, and the city kind of collapses. Is this familiar? I bet it is. If you've ever played City Skylines, um, you've probably noticed that around the 20,000 to 30,000 population mark, the traffic can break down and your city can break down along with it. Um, today, I really want to talk to you about effective use of road layouts and road hierarchy to avoid that scenario happening in your city. I'd like to welcome all of you to a map called Dendrum LZ. Beautifully built map. You can find it in the Steam Workshop. But it's not really about the map. It's about this highway layout that we start with. So road hierarchy, I, I would start at the top. The, the highest traffic flow for vehicles is found on the highways. Seems pretty obvious, right? And look, the, the highway is connected to itself via these trumpet interchanges. So this is how you connect a highway to another highway. Here's another highway coming in at a, almost a 90 degree angle, hitting this main kind of beltway loop that they've given us and connecting to it. Here's the beginning of the beltway loop coming around. So these are what's called system interchanges, which is when the highway system is connected to another part of the highway system. What you want to start your map with generally is actually a service interchange. Now, a service interchange is, is more like, typically, it's either an overpass or an underpass that intersects the highway. You'll see that what they've given us here and what most maps start with is a system interchange, which means that they want you to bring the highway into your city which isn't really necessary and, and can have some mixed results. Or um, it, I don't think that it's good to start a map with the mentality that this is the right way to start it. That's usually what the game gives you. That's what most map makers give you. But this means that I'm going to take a highway and bring it into the city somewhere. And like, where's it going to go? I, I don't know. It could come across and connect here. I, I think that what we have here is this beautiful beltway system. And I think that we'd be better off doing what's called a service interchange and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So now I've removed that intersection, that starting intersection that the map, the map maker gave us, and I'd actually like to start with what's called a service interchange instead of that would-be system interchange. Remember how I said it's the, the type of interchange that connects a highway to itself? I don't think that that's the best way to start a city, and I think that it sets a lot of people up for failure. Um, or, or even if you're just starting an area of your city, you know, this doesn't have to be how you start the entire thing, but I would recommend starting sections of your city just like this. Um, I just want to put this one back. So the way that you, you do this, of course, the way that you connect a, a service interchange into your existing highway network, you can build it yourself. I've already built a couple, so I'm just going to insert one of mine. This is called a partial cloverleaf. You can find it in the, in the workshop. I've also done videos about how to create this yourself. So check out my interchange videos for more information. And if you line it up just right, there's a chance that it'll work. Hey, there we go. Do, do, do. So I'm going to call that good. And we're actually going to delete a little bit here just to connect this a little bit more effectively. So what we've just done, if you look at this fundamentally, connect that, connect this. Turn this backwards. Okay. So we've replaced that that would-be highway connection. What we what we had there was a highway to highway connection. Now we actually have a highway to city connection. Okay? So that's the difference. This has uh, th this type of intersection or this type of interchange has a, a higher uh, it's how you get on and off the highway, effectively. It's an exit ramp. That previous interchange was the way you connect the highway to itself. This one is how you connect the highway to the rest of your city. So it's it's a bit different um, in concept. And I don't think most places talk about this properly, in my opinion. So that's kind of why I wanted to go over this a little bit. Now, the stock version of this that I made has a four lane road. I want to use a six lane road for this just because it'll be a little bit, a little bit better. And to start our road network, we want to start with an arterial road, which is where it is where the, uh, 
the artery of the city. So imagine, think of a circulatory system. The artery is the place, is the part of the circulatory, circulatory system that moves the highest volume of, of um, blood effectively. And that's why it's call, called an arterial road. So it's got to be a, a big six-lane road or a big four-lane road. It should be big. It should be effective. And you should think in terms of volume. So we've gone from the highway down to the arterial road is a good first step. And then from the arterial, we want to go down to our... Uh, actually, let's continue our arterial system here. We're just I'm just going to go east with this. East. In my mind, the map goes this way. So I'm just going to go in a couple different directions here. And we'll see what, you know, we'll see what comes to this. And let's do the same sort of thing over here. Just for imagination's sake. I stopped right before that thing on purpose. And let's say this one continues on 135 degrees. So we'll split the difference and go out that way. And we'll kind of go around the lake here. So now we've, we've begun building out our arterial system. I'm going to explore this a little bit further for just a moment. So here we are. So far, so good. This is our arterial road system. Um, uh, the hallmark of the arterial road system is we, we're doing a six lane road. It should either be four or six or eight lanes most of the time. And this is secondary to the highway. So we're coming down from the highway with a service interchange and we are essentially doing minimal intersections for these minimal. I've even been a little heavy handed. Some of this could probably be considered the next type of road, which is collector road. But um, this is, we'll, we'll call it arterial. This is all six lane road. Uh, some things that I was conscious of is coming off the highway. I wanted to make sure that there wasn't too much going on. So instead of a four way intersection here, we've done a roundabout, which is an okay thing to do. You, you should never do it on the highway, but you can do these on arterials. You can do these for traffic coming on and off the highway. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that we've we've made alternate ways to cross the highway. So we've got one, two, three, four different ways to cross the highway, only one of which, and not even necessarily the most attractive, is the interchange that we've built. So the interchange, we don't, we don't want the majority of the traffic using this to be going across to get to the other area. I'd much rather see, like this area, you can see there's going to be a lot built over here at some point probably. I'd rather they use this one or this one and just stay away from this one entirely. And this one, if, if we were to build like a an industrial area over here, which is kind of what I'd foresee. I wanted a way for them to get to this other area of the city without having to use the, the interchange overpass. So we've gone from highway down to arterial. The next set of roads that we're going to do is the collector roads. Give me just a moment to, to whip that up. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So check it out. We've still got our, our main arterial road layout. Nothing's changed there. I didn't make any adjustments. But I added these collector roads, and these roads, let's let's take this section for instance. You can see all of the four-lane roads with the trees down the middle. Those are the collector roads, and they look consistent throughout the whole thing. I've used six-lane standard vanilla six-lane road and standard vanilla four-lane road with trees in the middle, just so you can see the difference. And this road is where our local roads will plug in to get to the arterial. Now, in a good road network, this is called road hierarchy, we are trying to start from the smallest road and go up to the biggest road or start from the biggest road and go down to the smallest road effectively without having any bottlenecks in between. And you'll notice without intersecting the arterial too many times is the goal. You don't want too many intersections close together at this point, but we're right where we want to be. So we've kind of filled in, this used to be one big six lane block and this used to be kind of a big six lane rectangle. And now we've, we've split it with roads that we can connect smaller roads to. And you'll notice I, I really want people to only cross over using the arterial roads. I don't want to have just a bunch of bridges along here because that's kind of not that realistic looking and not that good looking. The, you know, <laughs> for every rule, there's a million ways to break it. But if you have a thousand bridges over your highway, it doesn't look that good in my opinion. In that case, you could use an elevated highway, which I've done in some of my cities. And you can really go to town with connecting the grid under it. But that's not what we're doing here. So you can see up here, I've left some dead ends in certain areas with the expectation that these will fill out using our local roads, which are going to be smaller roads, probably two lane roads. You'll see that come together um, in the next moment here. So now it looks like we've got something. Here is our full road system, uh, complete with local roads that you can see the small 
the small uh, two lane roads with parking on the sides. That's just the basic vanilla road. That is where the houses and businesses, not as a rule, um, but that's generally where the houses will get zoned. Um, so you can see, once again, we're, we're going on the highway. We get off the highway at this interchange here. The arterial roads distribute to the collector roads. And as a rule, all of the collector roads connect to local roads. So for this layout, I did not connect a single local road to the arterial six lane roads. So those, those collector roads are specifically for our smaller local roads to go on. And as long as you keep that hierarchy and are aware of how frequently you have intersections, um, this just as kind of closing notes for the whole thing, the more, the heavier the road is with traffic, the less intersections it should have. So let's, let's kind of count it up here. Our highway has one intersection and it's an interchange because we want it to, to flow pretty much freely um, to get into our, into our local road system. So there's one highway intersection. Our arterial system has maybe a handful. So maybe we'll say 10 to 20 intersections, something like that. You can, you can count them up if you, if you want. Screenshot this. Let me know in the comments how many. It's, it's going to be a bunch. It's going to be way more than one. But then our collector and local roads have dozens, 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 you know, each of these many intersections. So the smaller the road is, the more access it can have. So every intersection is access. The larger the road, the less access it should have. That's all part of road hierarchy. There's, there's people that study this for a living. They're called, uh, you know, city planners, or um, maybe there's a more concise person who does it. But yeah, that's generally what you want. You want your largest roads to break down into slightly smaller roads to break down into the smallest roads. And then when they want to leave their house, let's say the, the chestnut residents here, they want to get back on the highway. They go to their bigger road, which connects to the even bigger road, and then they can make two right-hand turns and boom, they're on the highway. So this eliminates through traffic going through neighborhoods. This eliminates uh, traffic buildup in the larger intersections as well. And to avoid an intersection, you can use a roundabout if you want. It's not always a perfect solution, but I'd recommend using it on occasion just to see what happens. Bonus points, bonus points, ready? The, the, the bonus round. If you can take... This would, this would be a bit more time consuming. I'd recommend doing this in your city though. Either bike lanes or, or paths. If you take paths and connect them to, to, your, uh, to your arterial roads, something like that, so that people don't have to walk or bike all the way around to get where they're going, double, triple, quadruple bonus points for that. People will walk. If you give them a, a short connection to go somewhere, they will totally walk it. Like 100% of the time, people will go by foot, and we really want them to do that in our in our cities. Um, so double bonus points for bike lanes, uh, but bonus points for walkability. If you can get people to, to cut these corners, that'll increase the range that they can walk, and they won't even go to their car, and it'll further alleviate the, uh, the traffic issue that you might be seeing in your city. Boom. There you go. Um, also, this, this will hold up very, very well with transit. So take, uh, take transit into account. Maybe this would deserve, uh, you know, maybe this whole bottom area would deserve a tram that cuts through the roundabout and goes down here and goes past the lake and up through the neighborhoods. Maybe this has a tram. And maybe that tram is connected to a metro. And that metro goes, goes uptown to, to this area where maybe this is where the tall buildings are near the train station that would have, you know, there's all kinds of ways you can approach this. I'm just theorizing. But if you can get people out of their cars and into, uh, onto their feet walking or biking or on the bus or on the tram or on the monorail or on the metro, any of those options are, are really, really good. Um, and this will actually solve your traffic problems like nine times out of 10. Just follow road hierarchy. Make sure you have a really solid load, uh, road layout picked out and everything will go smoothly. And if it doesn't, feel free to, uh, to join me on Twitch and ask me in chat, you know, feel free to upload a picture to our Discord. If you have like a specific city that you're working on and it's not working out for you, feel free to upload that to Discord and just show me what you've got going on. And uh, let me know if you have questions or if this works for you, if it doesn't work for you. This is, the, like I said, there's a science to this road hierarchy and, and transit and moving people around. Um, thank you for listening to me. 
Really appreciate it. Let me know the, your feedback in the comments as well. And I will absolutely see you in the next stream or the next video.